We have news on the LA Kings losing a young prospect. We'll recap two preseason wins from the last couple of days. And we'll talk about the Kings being featured on national TV. All that and more on this edition of Locked On LA Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked on LA Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. We'd love for you to leave us a positive comment on Apple Podcasts if you're a fan of the show. And we're also on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. I'm Eddie Garcia, your host of Locked on LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for the past 30 years, 20 plus years at the Fox Sports Radio Network. I'm also co-host of the Puck Podcast. It's a weekly NHL review show. That's been putting out content for the last 17 years. And a passionate LA Kings fan for 30 years. Hope you had a great weekend. The LA Kings played a pair of preseason games since our last show. Uh, one of them was on Friday night. The other one was on Saturday night. And the Kings made a bunch of roster moves as well over the weekend to try and shape their NHL and AHL rosters. Uh, and we've got to some news on the Kings being on national TV, featured on national TV, uh, which started tonight as well. Uh, but first, let's get into the Kings losing a young prospect. The Kings placed several players on waivers uh, on Sunday. Other teams in the NHL had 24 hours to make a claim on those players. They had about uh, till around noon Pacific time on Monday. The players that were placed on waivers were forward Samuel Fagimo, Akil Thomas, TJ Tynan, Hayden Hodgson, and Mikhail Maltsev. Uh, the defenseman placed on waivers, uh, Jacob Movarar. Kevin Connaughton, Joe Hicketts, and Steven Santini. Unfortunately, the Kings did lose Samuel Fogimo, who was claimed off waivers by the Nashville Predators. Uh, the only other option the Kings would have on Fogimo was to keep him on the NHL roster for the entire season uh, because he was not waiver exempt, obviously. Um, and the Kings, evidently, they felt that players like a Jarrett Anderson Dolan or a Carl Grundstrom who could have been claimed as well had they been placed on waivers, um, that two two things, uh, those two players can help the LA Kings now more than Samuel Fogimo. And there was the possibility of their fingers crossed that if they placed Fogimo on waivers rather than Jared Anderson Dolan or Carl Grunstrom, maybe Fogimo would slip through the cracks, whereas Jared Anderson Dolan and Carl Grunstrom would not. At least that was, that was what their thinking was. Uh, unfortunately, did not work out for the LA Kings and Samuel Fogimo is now a member of the Nashville Predators organization. If you're unfamiliar with Foggy Mo, uh, 23 years old, uh, likely a projected bottom six forward at the NHL level, I would say if everything goes right, that his ceiling could be maybe a second line winger. Um, but obviously that's just an opinion. That's not a fact. It's possible he could blossom into an NHL star. It's also possible he never makes any kind of a real impact at the NHL level. But regardless, he won't be able to find that out as a member of the Los Angeles Kings. Uh, for a recap on Foggy Mo, he was a second round pick, 50th overall back in 2019. Uh, good enough to get a sniff last year as far as being a possible replacement in the Kings lineup uh, early in the season when the Kings weren't sure if forward Victor Arvidsson was going to be available after offseason back surgery. And so Foggy Mo got uh, some decent looks in the preseason playing with some NHL players. Um, but that in the end, Arbitson was ready for the start of the regular season, but it did, it was a nice indication to Foggy Mo as to what the Kings kind of thought of him. Uh, he ends his LA career playing 13 NHL games, two goals, one assist. Uh, he was a two time 20 goal scorer with the Ontario rain. I have a quote from head coach Tom McClellan, who was asked about it earlier in the day. Uh, about the loss of Samuel Fogamo, and he said, quote, you never want to lose good players, and Sam's a really good player, but it's also a sign that the organization has done a pretty good job of building up the talent pool. You deserve an opportunity to play for another NHL team, and he's going to get that, so we wish him well. He's been a really good prospect for us. I'm sure he'll do really well, end quote. I know some Kings fans uh, that I saw some things on social media were quite upset about this, uh, and I certainly understand why he's um, a, a good looking young prospect, not a star prospect, but a good, solid NHL prospect is Samuel Fogimo. 
Uh, and the Kings basically, they lost him for nothing, which is part of the waiver process. So why did they do this? Well, again, Samuel Fogimo was not waiver exempt. He was on the NHL roster for training camp. And they wanted to send him back down to the AHL. And to do that, he had to pass through waivers. The same would be for uh, any players. Um, and let's just say, for example, Jared Anderson Dolan, Carl Grunstrom. They would have to be placed on waivers too uh, if you were going to keep Samuel Fogimo. And the Kings felt like a couple things. Those two players were likely going to get claimed and Fogimo maybe could slip through the cracks. Or, and most importantly, I believe the Kings feel like Look, we know that they're in a win-now mentality. Playoffs aren't good enough. It's advanced in the playoffs. And some think the Kings, if things go really well, could be a Stanley Cup contender this year. So they're looking at the, the present, not the future. I believe Samuel Fogimo is a better prospect uh, as far as down the road than a Jared Anderson Dolan or maybe even a Carl Grundstrom. Now, Samuel Fogimo has not proven really much at the NHL level. Those two guys have at least proved they can play a role at the NHL level. Uh, but when you look at Samuel Fogimo, I just think he has more tools in the toolbox. He's a guy who could play on your power play where those other guys really aren't. He's, uh, I think he's a better stick handler. I think he's got a better shot, a little bit more of an upside offensively. Um, but again, he's not, I don't believe he's NHL ready now. I think he could be better than those other guys, though, down the road. But the Kings aren't in a down-the-road situation anymore. They're in a win-now situation. So they took a chance. They hoped that uh, he could make it through waivers. He didn't. And it's the unfortunateness, what Todd McClellan was referring to, of the Kings being good now and having enough players where they have to have a player like a Samuel Fogimo go through waivers and had the potential to lose him. So... It is unfortunate. If you want to compare it to a Jarrett Anderson Dolan, for example, who I think would probably be the last forward on the Kings right now. Um, Jarrett Anderson Dolan just turned 24. Samuel Fogimo was 23 or is 23. Um, Jarrett Anderson Dolan obviously has played more NHL games. He's proven it at the NHL level, obviously much more than Samuel Fogimo. Um, and Jared Anderson Dolan is a former 20 goal scorer in, in the at the AHL level too, as Fogimo has been. So I don't think it's a huge difference per se. Like I said, I do think down the road, I could definitely see Samuel Fogimo turning out to be a better player than a Jared Anderson Dolan. But again, the Kings are not in a down the road situation. They're in a now situation. And so that was why that happened and uh, why they exposed Samuel Fogimo to waivers and why, unfortunately, the natural predators decided to claim him. So def a difficult loss for the Kings, but um, just going to have to uh, move on and, and wish Samuel Fogimo, uh, the best. Some other roster moves. The Kings sent a couple of uh, young players or with the with them during the preseason to their junior teams. Uh, one would be forward Cohen Zemer. Uh, he goes back to Prince George in the Western Hockey League. Had a primary assist, a nice assist on a goal against the Ducks on Friday. Uh, I thought he looked pretty good in the preseason. Short sample size, getting a taste of what it's like to be a pro. Um, he was not as advertised as far as being physical from what I saw. I, uh, this was a guy that we were told was going to hit anything that moved. Didn't really do much of that, but I also didn't think he looked so out of place uh, playing with a lot of the other guys who have had a lot more experience at the AHL level. Uh, and also defenseman Angus Booth. He's going back to Shawinigan in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. I think uh, pretty much the same as, as Zemer. Um, didn't look out of place getting a taste of pro hockey, so we will definitely keep an eye on those two guys this coming season as they return to their junior teams. Uh, players for the LA Kings that were released from their training camp tryouts included forwards Jacob Doty, Charles Udon, Ryan Francis, Isaac Johnson, Nikita Pavlichev, uh, defenseman Tyler Inamoto, Jacob Modry, and Wyatt Wiley, and goalies Jacob Ingham, uh, J.F. Barube, and Ryan Bednard. According to friend of the show and LA Kings insiders actively, those 11 players that were released from their training camp tryouts are expected to join the Ontario Reigns training camp roster as far as players who were assigned to the on uh, to the Ontario reign in the AHL players that were waiver exempt forwards Francesco Pinelli Martin Chromiak Samuel Hellenius and Taylor Ward defenseman Cole Krieger and Kim Nostianen and goalie Eric Portillo so as it stands right now as we are recording this show the Kings have 28 players on their training camp roster now two of those players Tyler Madden and Andre Lee are recovering from injuries. Once they do that, they will be sent through waivers. And if they clear, 
they will go to Ontario. So that means realistically right now, the Kings have 26 players on their training camp roster. Now the maximum you can have on your roster once the regular season starts is 23. Uh, the minimum is 20 and the Kings are expected to have 22, probably 21 players on their active roster on opening night. So that means that there are four or five players that are going to need to be sent down. We talked about Tyler Madden. We talked about Andre Lee. Um, I think there's 17 players right now that you can put in pen on the, on the, on the paper are on the Kings roster right now for the forwards, 11 forwards, um, Andre Kopitar, Adrian Kempe, Quinton Byfield, Philip Deneau, Victor Robertson, Trevor Moore, PL Dubois, Kevin Fial, Arthur Kaliev, Blake Lazat, and Trevor Lewis on defense, uh, four defensemen, Drew Doughty, Mikey Anderson, Matt Roy, Vladislav Gavrikov, and the goaltenders. It's two of the three. Cam Talbot, Phoenix Copley, or David Riddick. Obviously, one of the goalies is going to be sent down, and they'll have to pass clear through waivers. Um, that would put the Kings at 25 players. Um, the loser of the competition on the left side on the third pairing between Andreas Engelin and Tobias Bjornfoot will be sent down. They'll have to clear waivers. Uh, that would put the Kings at 24 players. Uh, and the remaining forwards, basically, to fill one, one roster spot on that fourth line would be Jared Anderson Dolan. Alex Turcotte, Alex LaFerriere, and Carl Grunstrom. Turcotte and LaFerriere are waiver exempt, so they could be sent down without being claimed by another team. That would put the Kings, and I think that's likely what's going to happen, that would put the Kings at 22 players with Jordan Spence and Brant Clark on the roster. That would give the Kings a starting 19 um, with one or two reserves, not including a backup goalie. So as I said, going in, we knew it was going to be tight because of the Kings salary cap situation, because of the players they have on their roster that are and are not waiver exempt. Uh, I think right now the two wild cards to make the opening night roster would be Alex Turcotte and Alex LaFerriere. Um, but like I said, because they can go back and forth, up and down, don't have to clear waivers, it's likely they're the, they're, they will be eventually sent down uh, to Ontario. So the roster is continuing to take shape both in the AHL and the NHL. Uh, so that was all the roster news from this past week. As far as the Kings on the ice, they did have two preseason games over the last three days. We are going to check in on how some players in the spotlight performed in those two games. We'll do that next here on Locked on LA Kings, your team every day. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle at a level up to its peak performance. From superchargers to roof racks to exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay motors, you're burning rubber, not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home the win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to us customers. All right. We had two preseason games to tell you about on Friday, the first preseason uh, NHL game played in San Diego in 29 years, I'm told. Uh, the Kings knocked off the uh, Anaheim Ducks by a score of 4-3. to three. L.A. getting goals from Alex LaFerriere, Martin Kromiak, Samuel Fagimo, and Hayden Hodgson. Uh, Fagimo was the only player that had two points with a goal and an assist. Uh, and all the goals, by the way, were scored against a legitimate number one NHL goalie in John Gibson of the Anaheim Ducks. Let's talk first about the L.A. Kings goalie in that game on Friday against the Ducks. And that would be Eric Portillo, the former University of Michigan star. His first preseason start for the Kings. Now, he did play uh, and got a start in the rookie faceoff, in which he did not look very good. Much better in this game for Eric Portillo. Now, he did allow three goals on 30 shots, but none of those goals that he allowed were bad goals. One of them was a stuff-in on a loose puck and a mad scramble in the crease. The other two came on, frankly, some really poor defensive play uh, and the giveaway by the LA Kings that really hung him out to drive. So he did make some pretty nice saves. Again, I thought the three goals he allowed, none of them were bad goals. Um, his rebound control was pretty good. He is not comfortable, though, playing the puck, which ironic, which is ironic because he got an assist in that game against the Ducks. But all in all, much better outing for Eric Portillo, so that's good. 
As far as the position battles amongst the defensemen, Brant Clark and Jordan Spence both played in this game. Now, not together. I still hope we can see that at some point just to get a taste of what that might look like. Um, but both look great. Um, the only downside for Brant Clark was he took a couple of bad penalties, but still looked very smooth, had a gorgeous primary assist on a tic-tac-toe passing play that gave the Kings their first goal in this one. He does so many subtle things well uh, that end up being positives, not forcing the puck around the boards when he gets into trouble. He calmly will just eat the puck, absorb a check from a four-checker, and then just kick it over to a teammate who then clears it out. Little subtle hold-ins on the boards in the offensive zone, just a little pass off the boards to deflect it to a teammate when you've got a defender uh, rushing at you. Just a really solid play all around for um, Brand Clark. And the same for Jordan Spence. I thought he really stood out on the power play, was quarterbacking the number one power play unit. It's so obvious his teammates are so comfortable with him at the point. They'll just blindly throw it back off the boards, and they know he's going to be there to hold it in and do something good with it. Um, so I thought a very solid effort from both Brant Clark and Jordan Spence, who they're battling theoretically for that third pairing spot on the right side. Tobias Bjornfoot did play in this game, and I thought he looked pretty bad. Um, Clark and Spence didn't have any giveaways in their own zone that I can remember. Bjornfoot had two on his first shift, and one of them led directly to a scoring chance. Um, and he had a bless his heart moment in this one. Now, we've talked about Tobias Bjornfoot. Todd McClellan has told him flat out he needs to be more noticeable, he needs to be more assertive, and he needs to just make an impact, uh, which is a little it, – it's the thing is with Bjornfoot is that he's not really an offensive player at all. Now, he can carry the puck okay. He's not a bad skater, but he's not – he doesn't really – he's not a Brant Clark, right? He's not even a Drew Doughty or a Matt Roy. That He just – but they want him to be more noticeable. Um, and he he tried in this game. There was a, there was a moment he got the puck at the blue line, and – the Red Sea opened up for him. He had a huge gap, and he said, I'm taking it to the net, which is the right play. Unfortunately for him, he's so uncomfortable doing that kind of thing. He ended up losing an edge, and he went headfirst into the post, and he didn't even get a shot off. And I'm sure that was embarrassing for him, but he was doing the right thing. I, I, I Somebody needed to tell him after that, hey, it's okay. That was the right play. Just next time, stay on your feet and get a shot off. Um he uh, also was out there on the power play uh, in a in a in a different situation, and he just looks really uncomfortable in that situation. But um, yeah, he didn't look so good, unfortunately for him. But I thought uh, Brant Clark and Jordan Spence looked great. As far as the second game on Saturday, which was in San Jose against the Sharks, uh, the Kings did have a couple of NHL levers level players join. This team, you did have Jared Anderson Dolan, Andreas England, and David Riddich was in net. Uh, Brant Clark and Tobias Bjornfoot were back out there as well. Jordan Spence did not play in this game. Uh, the Kings would get goals from Alex LaFerriere uh, in the third period, and then an overtime game winner from Samuel Fagimo uh, to get the 2-1 overtime win. And they did this against a Sharks team that did have several NHLers in this game in their lineup, Tomas Hurdle. Mark Edward Vlasic, Anthony Duclair, who joined the team in the offseason, Mike, Mike Hoffman, Nico Sturm. Uh, so it was a good win against uh, some pretty decent NHL talent opposing them uh, when the Kings really didn't have any of their really top-notch NHL-level players playing in the game. Let's start, though, with David Riddick. Uh, he stopped 34 of 35 shots. I thought he was very solid, made some very nice saves. Um, if I were judging the goalie competition right now, and this is just based on what we've seen in the preseason, this is not taking into account what Phoenix Copley did last year, but I would say you've got David Riddich one, Cam Talbot two, and Phoenix Copley three. Now, obviously that could change. And I think it is only fair that the Kings do take into consideration what Phoenix Copley did last year, but it's a, it's, they've had three goaltenders and uh, one of them played great last year. The other two have looked good so far as the new additions to the LA Kings. I thought David Riddick played very, very well. Um, the only goal he allowed was on a power play through traffic. So even the one goal he allowed was certainly not a soft goal. Uh, Andreas England, uh, who's in that competition with Tobias Bjornfoot, we think for the third pairing job on the left side, um, solid defensive play. Doesn't give you anything offensively, but just it did exactly what you think he would do. He does a great job of standing up offensive players entering the zone at the blue line along the boards. You're not going to get by him in that situation most of the time. Um, he did draw a penalty early in the game when he used his body to shield off a defender on a loose puck behind the Kings net, and the defender 
uh, reached around or grabbed him and took a penalty. Um, he would end up playing uh, 21 minutes, 36 seconds. He was a minus one uh, in the game. As for Tobias Bjornfoot, um, I thought he went back to vanilla. Um, seemed like what happened in the game before uh, affected his decision making in this one. And he was, you know, he didn't he didn't fall into the post. He didn't have any turnovers, which is good. But he also didn't do what the Kings have asked him to do, and that is to be noticeable, to be an impact player. And they had this one was a two-one overtime win for the Kings. They put him out there in overtime, and he looked so uncomfortable in that situation. I know they're trying to get him into that mindset of doing things, um, but it just it was not a t- not the game it was like it was against the Ducks. It was a better game as far as Tobias Bernard, but I thought he went back to his comfort zone and just didn't want to do anything out of that comfort zone again which is not what they're asking him to do. So um, he, he played 18 minutes, 32 seconds, did Bjorn foot. Uh, he had one shot on goal. He was a plus one. Um, but I would say on my very unofficial scorecard, I still think Andreas England is leading the competition against Tobias Bjorn foot for that uh, left side uh, defender on the third pairing. Uh, Brant Clark, another solid outing, had a nice hip check in the boards in the first period. I thought showing that he can have a little bit of a physical side to his game defensively. It's not all just about his offense and finesse, but he did put on a move in overtime on an NHL or Anthony Duclair and drew a tripping penalty and the Kings would score the game winning goal on the power play. So Brant Clark getting it done in a key moment, drawing a penalty that would end up the Kings getting the win. So another solid effort for Brant Clark, Jared Anderson Dolan, did play in this game. In hindsight, when you look at him and Samuel Fagimo in the same game together, which they did in this game, this was obviously before Fagimo was put on waivers, Fagimo looked like the better player. Um, and he scored the overtime game winner in this one where Jerry Anderson Dolan was just okay, nothing real spectacular. So for the folks that are upset about that and say maybe a guy like Jerry Anderson Dolan should have been the one put on waivers, there was certainly evidence, uh, at least in the preseason. I, you shouldn't take a lot into what happens in the preseason into account, really. I know we have to critique it because we're talking about certain things on this show. But, you know, just because Samuel Fogimo had a really good preseason doesn't mean that he's more NHL ready than Jared Anderson Dolan right now in my mind. But again, a very good, solid preseason, I think, so far for the LA Kings, especially for the non NHLers that saw action in the last three games. The Kings obviously had the split in Australia with most of the NHL players taking part. They had an overtime loss to the Ducks, and then they've reeled off three straight wins, that big win over Vegas where they took on a lot of their NHL players on the road, and then wins over the Ducks and Sharks. I think it's been a really nice preseason for a lot of guys in the LA Kings organization as far as like the prospects and the AHL types of players. Now, there's still three preseason games to go for the LA Kings. Uh, Tuesday, they're at home against the Ducks. Thursday, they play in Salt Lake City against the Sharks, and then they close out the preseason with a home game coming up this Saturday against the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, We are going to confirm something we told you about last week involving the LA Kings, talk about a big event coming up tonight for the LA Kings, and preview the rest of the week on this show. We'll do it here next on Lockdown LA Kings, your team every day. Hey, with one delicious scoop of AG1, you are absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. The special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. AG1 contains less than one gram of sugar, costs you less than $3 a day, and it's just one scoop in a cup of water. That's it. No need for a million different pills or supplements to look out for your health. It's a comprehensive solution, and if that's what you need in your supplement routine, then you need to try AG1 and you can get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Just go to drinkag1.com slash NHL network. That's drinkag1.com slash NHL network. Check it out. Uh, We do have a bit of Kings news. It was unofficial last week. It's official now. The LA Kings did announce that they will have an ad on their jerseys this year. I think it's just for the home jerseys, but I'm not positive about that. But Mercury Insurance is going to be the sponsor of the LA Kings for their jersey ads coming up this season. Uh, We also have uh, the Kings being featured on national television tonight. 
Uh, it is uh, the training camp uh, video that the Kings are not training camp video, the training camp show that the LA Kings are taking part in uh, behind the glass. Uh, is it three or four parts on the NHL network? I know part one is tonight. Uh, and if you don't get the NHL network, don't worry. Uh, we're going to be here to uh, watch the show for you. Uh, if you do watch the show, then we can kind of all analyze together some of the things we've seen uh, and to get a very cool behind the scene looks at the Kings recent trip to Australia and some of the Kings players as we get ready for the start of a new season. So the first episode of Behind the Glass uh, Training Camp with the LA Kings coming up tonight. We're going to check it out and we will recap it and review it coming up on tomorrow's show. And also want to remind you that the LA Kings play the Anaheim Ducks at Crypto.com Arena. That is Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Pacific. Catch every moment of the hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search LA Kings. For you everydayers, those of you that listen and watch every day, we told you that uh, we're going to recap Behind the Glass coming up on tomorrow's show. Looking forward to that. Um, like I said, if you don't have the NHL Network, don't worry. We're going to watch it for you and tell you everything that you missed. Um, Wednesday, we're scheduled to be joined by one of the co-hosts of the Locked On Golden Knights show as we do our rival report getting ready for the season. His name is Chris Golick, and he's going to give us some insight into the defending Stanley Cup champs for this coming season. Also going to ask him what he thinks about the LA Kings, and I specifically want to ask him about something involving the Kings and Golden Knights that has gotten some decent conversation around the NHL the last few days, and that was the hit by Hayden Hodgson on Mark Stone in that preseason game and the debate over, over whether that was kosher or not, uh, whether the, the comments from Mark Stone afterwards were sour grapes, uh, things like that. So interested to get into a discussion with Chris Golick on something that's been uh, bounced around around the NHL. What's, what is and what isn't acceptable when it comes to preseason hockey, when it's a veteran player involved, when it's a young player involved, things like that. It's been, it's, there's an interesting discussion going on about that. Uh, coming up on Thursday, we're going to continue to preview the LA Kings for the upcoming season as we will be less than a week away from opening night. Uh, we'll talk about more about the forward group that's developing for the LA Kings. And then, of course, on Friday, it is another LA Kings fan feedback show. All that coming up this week on Locked on LA Kings. If you want to send an email about anything we talked about tonight, the Samuel Fogimo situation, I'm sure will be a hot topic. Uh, the email address is locked on Eddie at gmail.com, E D D I E. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, obviously you can post your thoughts in the comment section below. Uh, we'd love for you to stay interactive with the show 24 7 by following us on social media. We are at, we're on Twitter or X, I'm still calling it Twitter, uh, and Instagram at locked on la kings i'm eddie garcia thank you as always for listening and watching this episode of locked on la kings part of the locked on podcast network have a great day we'll talk to you tomorrow and as always go kings go